Hello everybody, welcome to the Remote Education and Working Insight Roundup. Um, this is uh, part of the Campervan Cognizance uh, Insights playlist. So let's get started. Um, first of all, introduction, my name is Richard Hughes. Uh, I'm a, an MBA student at Bangor University in uh, Wales. And I want to try and essentially uh, build a community uh, online that are sharing uh, the challenges that they faced in light of moving to a more online world, whether that's um, in business or in education. Uh, I'd like to get insight from across every sector um, to try and build up a bit of a portfolio of um, best practice, essentially, to help everybody um, perform better in their um daily business, whether that's education, business, or any other sort of online collaboration. I want to get as many people involved with this as I can um, through in as many organizations. I've just started off now, set up a group on LinkedIn, which I'm going to work on building. Uh, so target audience, like I say, is literally everybody. Uh, the more people involved, the better, the more insight, the more feedback we have. Um, the best solutions we can come up with as a collective and yeah I want you to comment on anything you don't agree with I want you to correct me if you think I'm wrong somewhere and I want you to get involved in the discussion on the LinkedIn group uh, essentially that's where we'll, I'll be posting all of this and posting updates and drawing most of the feedback from uh, when we get it built up so yeah uh, I'll be leaving a link to the LinkedIn group in the video description uh, on this YouTube video and join the group, request to join and I will let you in. So let's get started with a few insights. So uh, some of the challenges um, we face so far, I'm going to go through some suggestions um, and some uh, solutions that we've already started working on uh, as students and, and, and staff at university. Uh, so the first one's a pretty big one for these times. Uh, there's going to be a lot more reliance on IT support staff and IT infrastructure. Uh, obviously arising with the fact that we're all, uh, or not we're all, but a lot of us are working um, from home in light of the situation with uh, COVID-19. I think this is quite a difficult one because um, it's been sprung on us essentially. and organizations have been working in a certain way for, for a certain amount of time and it's it's quite hard to get an effective transition into a world that you're not used to operating in so um one of the things that i've, I've uh, suggested we should maybe look at is as part of um, courses in the university it's having sort of experts or champions on certain software platforms um to provide support for other students on their courses and, and take a bit of a burden away from um, IT support. Uh, this gives people more of a reason to interact with people on their course as well and uh, yeah gets gets a bit of teamwork going and, and starts to help build that sort of like online community. Um, another thing as well is now we've moved a lot of resources um, online. I'm not saying we as in the university, I'm using that as like a general term for everybody function now um, a lot of things that people would have known where to find in work um, may not be as easy to find now uh, that can be due to signposting issues it can also be due to people being unfamiliar with um, software platforms and how to sort of like navigate the way around these things so uh, I'm currently looking at uh, sort of creating um, like a signposting document for for what I think are uh, the most important things for people to be aware of um, within the university. Um, distribution is also quite difficult, and this is something where I'd like to um, where I'd like to draw insight from the rest of you is how in this situation have you found it's best to get people to um, engage with content that you're posting online. Um, yeah, essentially, it's it's a, it's a tough one. I've been using uh, emails, Teams, uh, occasionally, um, 
Blackboard, which is a, an educational piece of software, uh, which do work well uh, when people understand how to use them. But uh, yeah, we need to try and um, sort of make people more aware of these things. Um, and the next issue on the slide, uh, problems with like online con problems with engagement in online content. This is this is potentially another um, familiarity issue. Uh, people don't know where to find things, so if you don't know where to find something, it's hard to engage. And I think um, we need a strategy to try and make tutorials more visible and the um, course sort of champions or experts on IT software would, would essentially play a part in this, uh, being able to sign posts to smaller groups like their course groups on, on how to find things and how to uh, work work different uh, software platforms. Um, so this for me is, is quite a big one um, in terms of education is um, the reduction in media richness. What, what I mean by that is um, you, like we're social beings, uh, we communicate much better face to face than we do um, via text message, for example, via emails, even via conference calls. Um, con conversations flow easier when you haven't got people talking over each other on Teams or Zoom. Um, so there are barriers placed with communication which can drag things out and make it hard to clarify um, certain things. And, and when you're delivering uh, training online as well, uh, I think that loss of media richness can, can play a big part, especially because um, certain individuals learn um, more efficiently uh, in certain ways, like hands-on um, type of learners, kinesthetic learners, I think, it, uh, I think it's referred to. Um, so yeah, what, what I've been trying to do with uh, fellow students and course reps here is try and build uh, sub-communities through teams so we can collaborate together um, in, on, the, uh, on virtual platforms but also uh, in line with obviously um, COVID regulations meet up outside um, and talk over any issues, socially distance, whether that's over a coffee. Uh, unfortunately for us in Wales, um, the time is now 7.30 p.m. and we went into um, a national lockdown from six. So unfortunately for us, all restaurants, pubs, and non-essential businesses are closed. Uh, so this is gonna have to uh, be put on the back burner for um, at least a couple of weeks for us. And I'd be, I'd be interested to know um, uh, how other people have dealt with um, making up for that lack of uh, media richness in that area and how they, how organisations have helped people to engage who don't necessarily learn as well outside of a physical environment. Um, that would be a really good point uh, if, if anybody has any, any input there. I'm going to flick to the next slide. Um, so another big one, um, I studied my uh, undergraduate degree online uh, with the Open University, which is a, a British university and I, I studied this while I was working full time and a few, we've had some feedback, uh, I've had some feedback and, and the other course reps have had feedback that students struggle to motivate. Um, when they're working solely from their like bedrooms essentially or offices and concentration can be a bit of an issue as well uh, i think that ties back into like the media richness a a um, aspect it's hard to sit in your room or in your office all day absorbing information um and then like processing it as well in the same environment uh, without being able to have like face-to-face -face discussions to work through problems with um, with other people, uh, yeah, I think there's I th a lot of the time with online lectures and things, you can have your camera and your and your microphone turned off, so it's easy to get distracted. You've got a lot of distractions in your room. You've got mobile phones, you've got tablets, you've got background noise, you've got people. Um, moving in and out, uh, I'm in halls, so there's a lot of people moving around 
and there can be various distractions there. So it'd be good to see how people have, have managed to overcome that. Uh, for me, what I tend to do when I'm in online lectures is uh, turn my notifications off on everything and just focus on the content that's coming in. Uh, it is difficult sometimes when you've been uh, getting presented to for a long period to, to keep absorbing that information and I'd be I'd be grateful to hear any tips uh, that people may have uh, regarding that. Another big one um, is the issues with uh, isolation, lack of social contact and how that affects uh, how that affects individuals' mental health. Um, yeah, this is this is a this is a really tough one to to, to work around because a lot of the time, people with with who are struggling with mental health issues um, struggle to come forward and open up. I've had personal experience with this, um, and yeah, it's it's not something that's easy to talk about. And when you don't have networks of people around you that can identify when your behavior is changing it's difficult for the support to be directed your way if you're not in the mindset to go and look for it um, sometimes you don't even know that you have an issue um, or a problem that needs resolving uh, which is a difficult aspect um, the university's got uh, I can't remember the name of the initiative but um, it's like a, a body system essentially uh, where you can team up with people and, and, and get to know each other that way but obviously that's being made more difficult now. I don't know if anyone has any um, suggestions of how this can be done uh, through online means when um, personal contact isn't available but for me uh, the, the real important thing here is, is to have that social interaction. Um, when everybody's locked away in the rooms, the houses, it's it can be it can be difficult for you to deal with it yourself and without those without your support networks um having access to you it's difficult for them to help you as well um one thing i would suggest is like friends and family to to keep in touch with each other as much as possible through skype calls and any other sort of video conferencing call telephone calls um keep that up as much as you possibly can when we can't see each other face to face um, again, I'd love suggestions on this, uh, what people think, good techniques. Uh, so um, this is a, the next one's a real big one is, is um, the challenges associated with facilitating face-to-face -face study sessions. So uh, in university, some of the modules have hundreds of students on and the, the challenge we face here is um facilitating lectures in rooms that will accommodate hundreds of people it's not really possible when you have um the requirements to social distance so um one of the things we're looking at doing um the banger uh, banger business school has been really proactive in um in, in collaborating with uh the course reps to look for solutions on this uh, relating to this um We've got a lot of international students in the business school here, so not everybody is actually in Bangor and able to attend lectures. So what we're going to try and do is build a um, so like a an active register for people who are here and who are willing to um, go to face to face lectures. Because obviously some people maybe um, have conditions that make them fall into the vulnerable bracket, or they may. They may have anxieties about um, being around other people while we're in the situation that we're in. So essentially what we're going to look at doing is building a, an active register so we know how many people are here. And out of say 200 people on a module, there's potential that there may only be 20, 30, uh, 40 people available and willing to go to lectures. So if we have this register, it's going to make it easier for us to facilitate those face-to-face -face, um, face -face meetings. Um, yeah, and I would be interested again and in, in how people uh, from business have managed this, whether they've coped with just online meeting platforms or whether there has been efforts to try and facilitate like person-to-person uh, -person, like office conferences where, where feasible. Um, yeah, feedback, send it through. And yeah, I'm going to finish on a, 
on a positive here. Um, there's been some there's been some positive feedback um, with regards to uh, the online uh, study setup. And they are for people who have who are studying with responsibilities at home, whether that's um, dependents, um, uh, they're looking after vulnerable family members. Uh, for those for those people, because a lot of the lectures now are recorded, uh, they can study around uh, personal commitments, which uh, is a real benefit. And another uh, positive we had from had from one of our professors, uh, a couple of her students had fed back to her that it's great now um, because in the winter in the UK, we, we all know what the weather's like, it rains a lot and it's cold. And students were commenting on how it's nice to be sat having a lecture in their room, watching the rain out of the window and not getting soaked by it and getting freezing cold. So yeah. There, there is there, there is positives there. Um, you do obviously there's um, you you do still lose some of the um, richness of media again, but it's not all bad essentially. Um, and yeah, there's going to be a lot less British students getting uh, freezing cold and drenched this winter, uh, which I suppose can be seen as as a positive thing. So, um, apologies for any tech issues here. This is like my first ever, first ever video here. Complete new setup, new software uh, myself. Uh, I was hoping to have a nice fancy background, but I didn't know how to do that, so I've just got a, a green screen. But yeah, um, if you're interested in getting involved in this conversation, uh, you want to add to the conversation, or you just want to cream information from the group. Um, please feel free to join. The more people this can help, the better in my opinion. Um, yeah, I wanna try and make the world a little bit more collaborative when it seems quite a lonely place at the moment. And that's gonna involve a lot of trial and error, um, a lot of off the cuff initiatives, creative problem solving, and that's what I'm trying to encourage people to do. So I'm going to put a link to LinkedIn group in, in the video description. So please, please join that group and, and, and get involved with the, um, with the conversation. And that's, uh, that's the end of this short inside session. It's a bit longer than I wanted to, uh, wanted it to be, but, um, this, this should be slightly shorter than this, uh, from now on. And I'm going to, if I've got enough information, I will be reporting back weekly. If not, maybe every every couple of weeks every 10 days something like that but yeah thanks for listening and um take care good luck with collaboration online <laughs>